Hello, 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 it is I, Elamor, coming back at you with another Settlers 2 10th Anniversary Edition video. And this one's a little bit different. As you can see, we've got the, ten the Settlers Vikings Edition, which I've never played. I've finished my series, I've done all the tips and tricks, I've researched everything, analysed it all, figured out the best way to, uh, to play the game. And now people are starting to use it. And so Peter on Discord sent me this video of him playing Settlers 10th Anniversary Edition uh, Vikings Edition, which I've never played. But uh, he's using my tips and tricks to take on this level, which apparently is the hardest one. It's called the Wolf Lunges for the Throat. Uh, I know this because I translated this uh, from English into Turkish um, for, uh, for the full translation, and so was able to figure out which mission this was. Now, what Peter's done is he's, he's used all the learnings from my video series to try and beat this level, which he says is one of the hardest ones uh, to beat. I don't know. But uh, he started off well here. You can see he's going with his grid system. I really like the way that he's set up around his headquarters. Um, the, I looked up the mission to see what he's got to do. Up in the top left there of the map is his allies. He's got to keep them alive. In the top right, there's the enemy. Uh, they're trying to kill him or his allies. And if they do either, then uh, they win. So that's what he's trying to do. Uh, looking to see how he started to set up. He's setting up a fortress there and connected it not to uh, uh, his main roadway. Oh no, now he's set it up, connected it to his main roadway. Okay, so uh, he's lovely grid system, like I say. He's got three Karlak, which I think is Carpenter, and so uh, probably get four foresters and four woodcutters in there eventually. All right, and they're across the top. You can see all of his uh, woodcutters and foresters going in. So yeah, that's going to be his wood system right around the headquarters. Now that's going to be a bit uh, a bit difficult because uh, in your very centre, if you play this grid system, there's not a lot of places to plant trees. So uh, it might not have been the best idea to put the wood system so like bang on the nose uh, around the, the headquarters there. Um, but the way that he's done it with the grid system, I don't think that there'll be much congestion. Whereas normally if you're playing with a kind of less regular road system, you get congestion around the uh, around the headquarters. So uh, yeah, I think uh, the way he's playing this is going to go well. He's going to expand territory up to, uh, to the left there. Uh, iron on the left as well, I noticed. So um, yeah, where his carpenters are is exactly where I would have put his iron foundry and his smithy. Uh, because you've got it in between the iron and the coal. But again, um, and with the grid system that he's set up, it's not going to be a huge problem. Uh, starting to think about food as well. So that was a fisherman just went in. And uh, I would have probably put a hunter in uh, if I'd looked around and seen some animals. But to be honest, I haven't seen any animals. Gold up at the top there. Uh, so again, over to the right, I'd probably put a mint um, so that we could turn the gold into coins from the uh, from the coal and the gold but uh, I haven't seen a mint go in yet all right night has fallen and he's going into his economy settings uh, putting uh, gonna fully reinforce all his night settlements he's got the weakest ones going out first and that's important when you're general farming so I set that up well uh, where is the wheat going it's going into the baker uh, sorry into the windmill into the pig farm I don't know why I shouldn't have any pig farms uh, and lots into the brewery. So that's uh, mostly set up well, although I would have just shoved the pig farm all the way down. Uh, everything's getting coal, uh, especially the soldiers. Soldiers need two sets of weapons for every coin, so uh, better to get it in all into a smithing iron foundry, as he's done. Uh, well water, yep, going. Uh, all right, setting up the uh, what gets carried first. Uh, interesting, okay, tools and weapons going up at the top. I normally put food at the top, uh, just because I feel like food is the, the basic of all the economy. Um, and then weapons and tools tend to put a little bit further down because I try and have them as close to uh, the spot that they're going to go to as possible. Uh, so I would have done things a little bit differently there, uh, but wood and stone at the top is what you want, and um, raw resources a little bit further down. So I think you know all of that's reasonable. I would have done it slightly differently. All right, so we've got a little bit of expansion happening here, and uh, he's going to build out here. This is where I'd put farms, and uh, lots of nice open space. And yeah, we're, he's going to put farms in, and look at this, he's doing it in the perfect way. Uh, this is the most efficient way of, uh, of getting your farmer four fields 
uh, in the optimal positions for him to go out to. So uh, yeah, love that, love that. Okay, we've got another farm going in. Uh, again, the same configuration, just uh, putting that in so the farmer can be as efficient as possible. If you're wondering why this configuration works uh, or why we don't put in pig farms, uh, feel free to check out our food comparison uh, video where we talk all about it and our farming uh, focus on the farmer video because uh, we go into all the details of why this is the best configuration. So, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, I just love the way that it's, you know, the farms are up there to the left. Um, it's probably where I would have put my wood um, production centers, uh, to be honest. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure of this map, so maybe there's a good reason for it. Um, yeah, otherwise the economy seems to be going uh, really well. We've got uh, the mines started, and uh, I think we've got probably four mines, uh, two coal, one iron, one gold, which is the right uh, way of doing it. And you need, uh, you actually just need a bunch of farms, I think eight farms to, uh, to cover that. So uh, he's going to need to create quite a lot of food sources. All right, uh, so we see our allies, uh, and they're building kind of wide, and we see the enemy, uh, and they're building wide as well, whereas we're building compact, uh, and our economy should flourish because of that. I do see that he's left this uh, tree region um, <laughs> for, the, uh, for the carpenters and the woodcutters, so uh, that's probably how he's managing to, uh, to keep his wood production going. All right, and uh, so Peter's fully understood that food is going to be the limiting factor at this point and so you've just got to create loads of food points so he's put farms all over the place he's put them all uh kind of spread them out nicely uh given them enough room to get all four fields so they're going to be efficient and then just a bunch of fishermen down here to take advantage of this water and uh, you know if, if you want to get fish fast putting a lot of fishermen together will allow you to do that but uh, but you'll run out of those resources fairly quickly so you just want to um, kind of balance how quickly you build fishermen uh, in this one because you're trying to save your allies I think and uh, you can see up the top there the um, in the map the enemies are encroaching into your ally space you just need to get things going as quickly as possible so uh, yep lots of fishermen makes lots of sense and um, because you're gonna need to make soldiers and you're gonna need to make uh, gold as soon as possible all right I just want to pause the video here because this is really really smart uh, and you may have been wondering why this fortress uh, is here in the middle of nowhere, you know, no, not close to the enemy, uh, close to your headquarters, uh, the wrong side of the headquarters it would appear. Uh, and I did suspect that this was going to be uh, part of soldier production. Uh, it is. At the moment this road system is still connected to the headquarters. But what I expect uh, Peter will do is he'll just get rid of this um, uh, this road that's connecting the fortress to everything else and down here this is what tipped me off down here in the left corner is a waterway and so what's going to happen is the goods the coins the weapons uh, the the uh, beer is going to go uh, through the waterway and into the port that'll make soldiers uh, the soldiers will go to the fortress uh, and then the coins will go into the fortress and they will get leveled up uh, but new soldiers can't uh, can't come in and generals can't leave they can't go back to the port he'll set it so that uh, generals can't go back to this port so when he evacuates the generals out of the fortress uh, they'll they'll have no choice they'll actually wander around until they hit another road and then they'll go into the headquarters uh, and then it'll get restocked with another uh, another private who will then get leveled up as well so this right here is a general farm and he's had this idea since the very beginning which is very impressive and it's a really nice way that he's done this so in food going to his mines and uh, not quite how i would have it i would have gold about half as much as iron uh, coal to iron ratio is about right but uh, if you've got a general farm you just need a lot less gold because you use it so efficiently so uh, i'd have changed that so phase one has gone really well he's got a real nice setup uh, but phase two is about to start because the enemy is approaching and so you're going to have to start soldier production now you can see his economy is looking really nice uh, he's starting to get some soldiers and some upgrades so coins come in so just like we uh, thought he would do i think he's going to remove that road let's see if yeah uh, there it is and so now he's going to start producing soldiers and that's really phase two uh, and here we go he's doing it <laughs> 
Uh, so he's evacuated the general. The general has nowhere to go, so he just goes to the nearest road uh, and into the headquarters, and you see a private coming in to replace the general. So he's going to cycle through the, um, the soldiers, promoting them, build up his soldiers, uh, and really get his, uh, get his defenses in order. And then phase three, of course, is to go on the attack. So uh, I think we'll just skip ahead. Uh, the promotion of soldiers is going to take a while. His economy is set up really nicely. There's no congestion. So all of this uh, should flow through pretty smooth. All right, so defenses are getting built up, but uh, we've got a message. I don't know what this message says, but I assume it's something like, your allies are being attacked, you've got to save them. So uh, yeah, it, it's time to go on the attack. You, you can't go on the defensive. As you can see though, according to that graph, we are much, much stronger now than the enemy uh, because of the great groundwork that's been set up. Uh, so yeah, we've got fortresses uh, going up. They're gonna be, in fact, just finished. So uh, we'll have a base of operations to send our soldiers out from. Uh, and actually, I don't think the enemy's gonna be able to stand in our way. Uh, at the beginning, it might be a little bit uh, tough just as you kind of pit your generals against their generals, but eventually we're gonna have uh, too many generals for them, we're gonna overcome. I'm just going to slow it down there and you s this is where you see why you uh, don't give as much food to your gold mines. Uh, you probably want to give about um, you know, full to the coal, half of that to the iron and then half of that again to the gold because otherwise you just run into this situation where you've got gold waiting to be smelted and not enough of the other resources. <laughs> oh boy, it's not looking good for these green vikings. Uh, they're getting slaughtered. We're going to have to step in pretty quick. And uh, here it is. So phase two has come to an end. We've got fortresses full of generals, so it's time to attack. And you can see we're going off to do exactly that. So this is where we find out if we've really set up our bases well enough. Do we have enough people? Uh, do we have enough resources? Can we sustain our attack enough in order to be able to take out our enemies? Uh, we shall see. Well, we actually lost the first few battles, and as you can see, uh, we've been losing some uh, soldiers, some generals, but so have they, uh, and this is now really a war of attrition. Uh, can we sustain the attack longer than they can sustain the defense? So don't get disappointed if you lose your first few battles. That's normal. Uh, the AI has about an extra third of a chance to beat your generals uh, if it's like for like. Uh, so you do have to commit more soldiers uh, in order to win these battles. And here it is, uh, the fruits of our labor have paid off. We've started to win. Uh, we've taken over one of their fortresses, which is uh, huge and probably means that they don't have enough soldiers to, uh, to commit any more for their defense. So uh, this is really the end game now, uh, where all you really need to do is you know, continually, uh, but strategically attack. Uh, you can see on the map, we'll probably head north. Um, people will probably head north and just cut off the uh, remnants of those red soldiers. And yeah, this is really the end game. Now, unfortunately, Peter didn't send me the end of this video. Uh, so, you know, he takes over and starts winning a lot of these battles. But I don't see how it ends. Um, <laughs> but I assume uh, he's in such a strong position that, uh, that really there's no, uh, there's no way the Reds are going to come back from this. As you can see, he wins another fortress. So, uh, yeah, uh, really a very well-played game. Um, did almost everything... Uh, right, no real mistakes. A couple of you know tweaks, uh, I would say, to uh, the economy settings uh, and maybe just the placement of some of the buildings to uh, to really maximise the uh, the compact nature of this level. But uh, overall, yeah, really enjoyable to watch this. Thank you, Peter, for sending it to me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope uh, others of you have learned from Peter's example here and uh, that it just increases your enjoyment of the Settlers games. Uh, if you haven't played them, try out New Allies and Vikings. Uh, you can get them in multiple languages, including Turkish, which uh, I did the translation for. And uh, all in all, I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you with whatever we do next. Thank you.